I remember the invention of the name, as a matter of fact. It, I believe it happened in 1955. My father thought this would rot my brain. He said, what is that? There's no tune there. There's no nothing. You know, it's not like every little breeze seems to whisper Louise. He could understand that. Um, Alan Freed, who had come from Cleveland and had done gospel shows, uh, had a show uh, called The Moondog Show. And Moondog, the famous New York blind Viking poet character, who had blind Viking poet groupies, by the way, very esoteric form of groupies, hard to find them. They only attach themselves to blind Viking poets. He uh, threatened to sue Alan Freed because of the name. And then I remember that day, hey, boys and girls, we have a new name for this show, The Rock and Roll Party. Uh, mostly they were groups. They were black groups uh, or duos, Charlie and Ray, uh, um, the Cadillacs, the Harp Tones, the Valentines, some of whom crossed over and secularized gospel music. And it became our, our thing. It became our thing. Our parents didn't understand. Um, they did not get into that till many, many years later when it was universal at a wedding when they'd play some rock and roll. I think parents, parents feared it. <coughs> when one looks now, <coughs> when one looks now at the objections to Elvis, for example, I was never a big fan of Elvis's, but Elvis the pelvis, you know, these, these gyrations and all. Um, this was old hat in the black community, jitterbugging. Um, also, sexuality and dance was old hat even to whites, the tango. I mean, it's very, very sexual dance, very. Um, but suddenly their children were doing, as soon as it spreads to their children, when drugs went from some uh, esoteric little problem in Harlem to that, oh, then it became a problem. Um, it seems innocent now that, should they allow Elvis to do that with his pelvis in, in public, you know? They, they, it was like, it was the last of, of, of the naive times. And except for that little bit of convention that today you can hear anything, any, any comedian uses any word, anytime he wants to, it kind of spoils it except for that little subtlety that was missing, that, 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 that dance of avoidance until the right time comes when you're married. Um, except for that part that's missing. I don't miss that at all. It was a repression that was unnecessary. It caused endless guilt and unhappiness and young women and young men feeling guilty about something they did which they couldn't help. I had a group called the Teen Tones and the culmination of our career. We sang in the toilet in high school because of the echo. You know, we sounded like a recording studio in the boys' room at Dale Clinton High School. Anywhere else we sang, it sounded like we were singing in a toilet. But in the toilet, we sounded like a recording studio. We couldn't get any recording company executives to come and hear us. They didn't have toilet divisions to scout talent. We were on the Ted Mack Amateur Hour, which was a holdover from old Major Bowes shows in the 30s, which I never saw. but. Ted Mack went around and had amateurs put them on television. We sang, I want a Sunday, gonna love, do, 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 you know, those kind of songs. And we were defeated by a one-armed pianist from Missouri who played a Mozart sonata for four hands. He was quite busy, but he wasn't that good. My father once had a breakthrough, I think, where he understood that when he was a kid, toilets ran next door. <laughs> I'm an improviser, I can't help <laughs> Listen, can you hold up urinating until we're finished here? This is PBS. My father had a sort of breakthrough once, as I recall, where he realized that eh, they had their fads too. When he was a young man, maybe older than 13, but when, oh, everything's upside down. When the music goes round and round, ooh, and it comes out here. Well, I heard this, and he said, this was a wild song that we had when I was a kid, and I said, yeah, that, that's wild, you know. Boop, boop, be doop. Every era had its own. Every era thinks it has its own. I must say, this was more significant than most, because this naive, more naive music of the 50s, rock, so rock and roll, led to some significant music, some of which is overrated in the 60s later on, but 
but, but still opened up a whole avenue of a new kind of popular music. And uh, some very talented people were attracted to it, poets and excellent musicians. And it also unabashedly brought to the population at large, meaning white people, um, what were basically African rhythms. You know, I saw old photos uh, of movies of the Johnsons who went filming in, in uh, Africa in the 20s. And they played jazz for these uh, natives, these Africans. And the, the, it doesn't look at all different from dances today. They got right into it in a second because they fed it originally. Every era thinks it has, oh, their, their children are the most rebellious. You look at quotes from ancient Greece. I mean, the children are running wild. We have to do something about them. And also, every era thinks it has a foothold on morality. You know, oh, the ball players today take cocaine. Well, you know, the gas house gang in the 30s in St. Louis, St. Louis Cardinals, never attended a game sober. You know.